Hello, and welcome to the channel. My name's Box of Demons, and today, it's a video about me drinking Yorkshire tea. No, it's not. Today, I'm gonna to be doing something completely different, as I like to do on the channel occasionally. Sometimes I do airsoft, sometimes I do hiking, but you know, I've got another channel for that, Boots on the Ground. Recently, I've been in hospital with a suspected blood clot on the lung. Yes, it turns out it's actually a muscle rip, so my ass has been like that. But you know what? What I'm about to show you is something com so completely random, so... What? That I thought I might share it with you, and that little something is in here. So what I'll do is I'll give you a few seconds just to try and guess what's in this box. And then I shall explain. <laughs> Let me just have a quick sup of tea while you have a quick guess. Oh, what about you, Yorkshire tea? Right, are you ready? Are you sat down for this? Are you having a midlife crisis? You're joking, aren't you? I'm one foot in well ink grave. In this box, there are some living creatures. <laughs> Yes, while randomly searching around on YouTube, I found a channel called Ants Canada. And gives you a clue what's in that box. And this guy's really passionate about his ants, and I thought, do you know what? I fancy having a go at that. So yes, Box of Ants should be the new channel if I decide to ever set one up on ant keeping. I thought I'd give it a go. I thought it'd be really interesting. A little bit of nature in your room. And once you start to look into it, it's really, really interesting. And it's as complicated and as easy or as difficult as you want to make it to be. So in this box, we're going to open this together. And I shall give you a little bit of info about the species in this box, how I'm going to look after them, things that I need to consider in the future. And well, can you believe it? Box of ants! Let's open it up and let's have a look. Bloody ants. Can't believe it. <laughs> so let our antastic adventure begin. Now I got these from antkit.co.uk and it was £12 for special delivery, which means I got them the next working day after. And they also included a free pipette for water and also a free test tube should you want one. So I also ended up getting some acetate. And for all those experienced ant keepers out there, you know exactly what that's for immediately. But for everybody else who's new, who wants to follow me on my antitastic adventure, well, we shall go through that together when we get in there. So let's just have a look and see what we've got in the box. And I will blur out my address because obviously, you know, I'm, I don't want to be unindated with hot swimwear models. I can only deal with two at a time. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So here we go. Let's just get rid of that. And let's just put these crispy for me goodness in this little tub here and see what we've got inside. No complaints on the packing. Now, if you imagine in here, I'm hoping there is a queen, and it did say when I ordered them, you could get between one to five workers. So we shall have a look and see what's in here. Obviously, this has come all the way down from down south. I've got something in here. I think that might be the spare you. I was going to say spare YouTube then. Spare test tube. So here we go. This is one of the spare test tubes that you were given for free. It is a plastic one. And I would prefer a glass one at some point, as they're a little bit clearer and easier to see. So maybe the ants are in here. Nope. This is the red acetate, which we shall go through in a second, and what we're actually using that for. So where is the queen? Where are my ants? Oh, can't tell me they've forgotten to put them in bloody box. Uh, hmm. The suspense is killing you. I know, I know. Uh, oh, I thought they would be, hold up, they may be in here, oh I can just about see them, my god they're tiny, they're smaller than I thought they were going to be, there they are, in the ant kit test tube, so let's get this box out of the way, let's make sure there's nothing left in there, I wasn't sure whether I'd order some tweezers as well, it doesn't look like it, but I have got some anyway, 
Right, so let's get this out of the way. Let's have a look at what we're dealing with. And I shall tell you a little bit about this species of ants and why I chose them and the procedure for me moving forward from here. Well, that's what was in the box. That's what I ordered. A test tube, some acetate, and Her Royal Highness, the Queen. Let's move on. Awesome. So come on then, box of ants. What made you want to get into this? Well, it's one of these completely random things. I've been wanting a couple of border terriers. And instead of two pets, I thought I'd have 5,000. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, we're a long way away from it. Don't think that these ants are going to be, you know, banging each other senseless. The process is quite long. But anyway, what have we got? This is the acetate. And I'll tell you now what the acetate for is. We actually wrap this around the test tube because these ants, this species, can't see red light. So it means to them it's actually dark in the test tube, but it gives us the opportunity to be able to observe their anti-goodness and the anti-feet marching around and basically look at, into their world and see what's actually going on. So hopefully in here is my queen, my beautiful lady, my black garden ant or in other terms, in the ant-keeping world, and they're called Lassius Niger. And here we are. I'll give you a little bit of a history about these ants and the species and what's so special about them. But from looking in the test tube, my dear queen is not moving. Now, she's come from down south, so she's probably popped up on Shandy, and she's a little bit out of it. And now that we're going to feed her some northern ale, she'll soon come round and she'll be fighting in no time. So there she is. It's very difficult to see because these ants are actually a lot smaller than I was expecting as a first time ant keeper. But this is all part of the journey. And if you're enjoying it, hopefully you can join me as we move forward. Currently, the only way I can actually see the ants in this chest tube is using the macro lens. But I want to ask the ant keeping community what sort of camera lenses they're using in order to be able to get in even closer. I am using a macro on a Canon 5D, so it's very, very difficult with a massive amount of shallow depth of field here to actually see my lady. And incidentally, while we're here, before we continue on, on the video, I'm going to ask you, my subscribers, to give me suggestions on what we can call our queen, and I will take the best five suggestions and pick the winner in another update video coming real soon, I'm sure. So let me tell you a little bit about this species and how we're going to move forward and grow our colony. So I just want to apologize immediately to the ant community who I'm going to be posting this video to, to get their advice on the next step in keeping my ants nice and healthy. As you can see, we have a queen and we also have a few workers. Now these are called Nantix and these are much smaller than the actual workers that will eventually she will lay eggs for. And from the eggs, they will then turn into larva and then up to 10 to 12 days they will turn into pupa and almost they, they create a cast around themselves and when they hatch we will get basically the first batch of real workers now the queen doesn't need much food at this stage because she actually uses her back muscles as fuel where her wings would be and this in orders her to be able to survive quite a long time without any food but we will be putting some honey in on this video just to give her a little boost Lassius niger, this is one of the most commonest European species and it's often especially evident at sites of human disturbance like towns, villages and quarries. And nests can occur in walls, pavements, tree stumps and in open woodland, pasture and open heath. Occasionally earth mounds are formed and foraging tracks are frequently covered by surface tunnels of earth. This species is aggressive and readily attacks other ants. Nests are single queened and moderately populous with several hundred up to 10,000 workers. Aphids on shrubs and herbs, as well as subterranean species, are tended. Mating swarms occur during July to late August and in some years huge numbers may fly over a large district on the same date. This species is native to the UK and there was a few different other types of species of ants that I was looking at such as Lassius flavus which is the kind of a field ant and it's got a real beautiful golden colour but that tends to be a little bit more shy and it likes to burrow more so the chances of you actually seeing it are less. Now I'm told by the ant community that Lassius niger 
can be quite aggressive, and if there's any opportunity for these sneaky little ants to escape, they will find it. Obviously, at this stage, it's nothing really for us to worry about because they will be staying in this test tube until we have at least 50 workers. Now, as a new ant keeper, I thought, well, that seems cruel, cramming them in there. But these ants really are tiny, and they, are a, they like to burrow as the queen starts to lay eggs and the colony gets a little bit bigger. Now, unfortunately for me, these ants need to hire, hibernate, and this is called diapause. And really, from the end of October until early March, we need to put these ants into hibernation, and that means dropping the temperature between 5 to 10 degrees, covering them, and putting them somewhere for six months. So I've really kind of done this at the wrong time. However, you don't have to hibernate them, but it means that production of the queen and the eggs later next year will be vastly reduced. Now you could say, I don't want a huge colony of ants, but I would like at some point to be able to get to the point of having a aquarium sized tank with quite a large colony that I can then put in sand real plants and twigs and sticks and start feeding them larger things like crickets and cockroaches etc etc so this video I am going to put on the ant keeping uh, discord and get some advice off people who know the best way to achieve my goals and hopefully I can be in it for the long game one of the most difficult things I've found as somebody new to this hobby, somebody wanting to jump in, is that there is such a plethora of information out there. And even on the Reddit, Discord, and on forums, etc., everybody's got a different opinion. But there was a few people on the Ant Keeping Discord, their names were mentioned by other people saying, hey, you know, everybody else listen to these people. So a few people have been giving me advice on this species, what to look out for how to care for them, etc, etc. So if you're thinking of doing this, this species plus the Lassius flavors, and there's a couple of other ones really are best suited to beginners currently because the humidity and the temperature and things like that, they're not hugely affected by this. Whereas some of the other ones like the leaf cutter ants, etc. They're very specifically tailored to somebody who knows what they're doing and of course some of these ants have got a nasty sting and some of them can squirt formic acid so you've really got to know what you're doing before you jump in and do this the biggest surprise for me so far is actually how tiny they are so i am gonna have to look at getting a new camera and finding out how i can get a better look in their world we are a long way off getting an outworld and a formication Former mummification? I can't even remember the word now. Basically how we house the ants. But I'm going to ask the ant community, what's the best stage for me to do now? I'm told to give them a little bit of honey every couple of days. There are, by the looks of it, some pupa in there. So, again, I need advice on when's the right time to actually hibernate here. What's the best advice for looking after these and how I actually move forward? So thank you for advancing in. For any advice that you can give me i will be wrapping the test tube up now in the acetate to give them a little bit of darkness and i will be posting this and getting advice from everybody who knows what's what so in the meantime give me an idea of what you think we should call our queen and i will pick the best five even if it's not in another ant video maybe in on another gaming channel or whatever wherever and we shall pick one and we'll she'll take it from there incidentally you can see on screen some tropalax I think that's how you pronounce it, Tropolaxis. Uh, it's where the other ants, they take enough food on for themselves and then they will actually have a store that they will give to the other ants. And as you can see on screen there, one of the workers or one of the Nantics was actually feeding the queen. Just before I log off, another question for the ant keeping community. Since I've put the acetate on, my queen, my beautiful queen, has been at the honey for the last 25 minutes now whether this means she was absolutely starving or whether i shouldn't have put quite as much honey in there again this is all completely new to me so any advice or any suggestions that you guys can give me is very much appreciated but that brings the end to this video thanks for watching something a little bit different but hey ho something different and i'm really quite enjoying it thanks for watching I've been Box of Ants. <laughs> See you in another video coming real soon.